How to rebuild a vintage steam toy, this is part 8, fitting the flywheel, making some modifications and a test run on compressed air. The first thing I have to do is make it so I can mount the flywheel to the shaft and to do this I've drilled a hole in the flywheel and I'm threading it 4BA to take a 4BA grub screw which once it's tightened onto the shaft will hold the flywheel in position. If you've been watching this series from the beginning you will know that the flywheel was counterboard to take a steel centre because the original centre was a little bit out to say the least. I tapped the cast iron part of the flywheel dry because you don't need lubricant with cast iron but when I came to thread the part through the steel core I did use some lubricant because the last thing I want to do is break off the tap. But I didn't do that and now I'm screwing in the grub screw ready to fit the flywheel. As you can clearly see, the flywheel isn't finished, but I thought it was about time that I give the engine a test run to see if it works. Before I fit the flywheel to the crankshaft, I need to fit the engine to the base because it's very top heavy when the flywheel is on the crankshaft. The entire assembly locates on the base and it's just fastened in place with three bolts. I'm trying very hard not to drop any of these bolts on the floor, they all went into the holes without event. Are they bolts? Are they set screws? The debate continues. Before I can run the engine, I need to pipe it to the boiler. I also need to fix the valve as well. These are the original parts that I'm going to refit, and as you can see, they're not bent into the correct position. I'll do that very shortly. But first, I need to screw the fitting into the top of the boiler to make sure that when it's fully screwed home into the top of the boiler, the handle is in the correct position even though I haven't fitted the handle yet. Fitting suitable shim washers made it so the valve was in the right position. Then I unscrewed the pipe work so I can lap in the valve. And for this job I'm initially going to use some fine valve grinding paste. I'm using a very small amount of this stuff and plenty of oil. By rotating the plug in the socket with some grinding paste, both of the surfaces start to mate together. This grinding paste is really designed for grinding the valves in a car engine into the seats in the cylinder head. So in no time at all, these brass parts fit together perfectly. After removing every trace of the grinding compound, I need to do a little bit more lapping, but this time I'm using a much finer compound. I'm just using some metal polish. And once again, the same principle, insert the plug into the hole and rotate it until it sort of feels good. I suppose I could insert a girlfriend joke at this point, but I'd better not really. So once again, after the lapping operation, thoroughly remove all traces of the compound, and in this clip I'm fitting a nut and washer to hold the plug in place. You have to be very careful with these plug cocks, don't over tighten anything. The thread on the end of it is very small and you will easily shear it off. This nut needs to be just tight enough to hold the plug in position. The next part of the job is to fit the shim washers so that this tap, when it's screwed in position on top of the boiler, is the right way round. And you will notice that the plug has to be removed to allow this to happen. At some time in the past, this pipe has been kinked by twisting it. So what I'm attempting to do here is twist it back the other way to remove some of the kink. And it's fairly successful. I don't think I can get it 100%. But I don't want to make new piping for the engine, the original piping will look better. What I'm doing here is applying some flux to the end of the pipe because I'm going to soft solder this pipe into the fitting on the steam chest. This is 4mm diameter pipe and I cleaned out the orifice where the pipe's going to fit with a 4mm drill. Once again using my very useful, extremely small blowtorch, I'm soldering the pipe in position. I'm using electrical solder for this job because it's very convenient. I'm applying more solder than I need and I removed the excess with a paintbrush dipped in water. The next part to fit is the manometer. I don't think this works to be perfectly honest and with the low pressure that this engine runs on, a pressure gauge is not really an essential fitting. I'm going to set the safety valve to around 20 pounds per square inch. I don't have the safety valve yet. I'm fitting a 5 16 by 26 threads per inch blanking plug in the safety valve hole and in the hole where the whistle valve will fit, I'm using a standard steam union. And in this clip, I have some compressed air piped to the boiler. I wonder if it's going to run.
Yes, it runs quite well. It makes a lot less noise when I lift it off my soundboard. Don't forget, I work on a soundboard so I can hear knocks and clanks from engines. I don't like this spacer. It's still moving about. I thought the oil would seal it, but it's a bit of a rattle fit. Just then, there was a knock on the workshop door. And my delivery had arrived. So I thought I'd do a quick unboxing video. This is an unboxing video of my delivery. And what is it? Is it a steam engine? No. Is it a steam engine pad? No. It's a bottle of whiskey. But not just any whiskey. This is really nice stuff. And the last bottle, I made it last five years. I'm not a big drinker. This 16-year-old malt whiskey is really nice and I can recommend it. But please note, I don't recommend drinking whiskey in the workshop. I'm going to modify this spacer. It's a very quick fix. I just counterboard the end of it to take two O-rings like this. And these O-rings will centre it on the crankshaft. I put the assembly back together and thanks to the slip eccentric valve gear the engine will run in both directions but you do have to turn the pressure off before you can rotate the crankshaft to move the quadrant into the opposite direction. That's it for this video. It's running quite happily next to my bottle of whiskey. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.